Welcome to the In My Opinion Show on Ronald Bay Robinson and Friends, seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. To view, go to our very own channel. In capital letters, type in RBRIMO to view our extensive catalog of shows. I want to I want to introduce my talented uh, co-host, Mr. Henry Hatter. Uh, hello, Ron, and congratulations, Denise. I believe that you have uh, a granddaughter graduating from Howard University. Oh, yes. Uh, your life is nothing but a success story with your kids. Uh, <laughs> we all appreciate you. You make us look good and raise the IQ of this platform. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and welcome to you, Denise. <laughs> thank Good you, my Ron. Show. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> and welcome to our millions of viewers worldwide. Let's talk about... Nigerian schoolgirls. The abduction of more than 200 girls from a school dormitory in Nigeria has understandably shaken the world's consciousness. This reprehensible attack by a Muslim extremist offends our collective sensibilities at so many levels, not only putting the lives of these innocent victims in jeopardy, but, but denying them the best hope for the future and their education. Sadly, it is perhaps only the scale of the abduction that has merited such widespread attention, but the reality is that young girls in many parts of the world have their futures cut short by keeping them from their schooling, and for a variety of reasons. Abductions are the most horrific. Young girls taken forcibly from their families often are compelled to enter the seedy and dangerous world of sex trafficking, a business that some estimate is, up to, is upwards of $20 billion annually. Approximately 10 million ch children each year are subjected to various forms of sexual exploitation, exploitation in the commercial sex industry. In some parts of the world, as many as one in three sex workers are between 12 and 17 years of age. There is no evidence that the Boko Haram abductions, this is a terrorist group in Nigeria, were connected to sex trafficking. By all accounts, these girls were removed from their school for religious reasons by extremists to object to the education of girls. The episode is rem rem reminiscent of Malala, you, you just of the now 16-year-old courageous Pakistani girl who was shot in the head by the Taliban to keep her from her studies. Many religious extremists, it would seem, are more threatened by an educated populace than armed enemies. Denise, let's go to you first. Uh, uh, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this abduction of these, of these Nigerian uh, schoolgirls first? Well, absolutely. I think um, what you read kind of speaks to uh, the seriousness of, of this thing. Uh, number one, um, of all accounts that I've heard so far, the main reason is um, an education um, denial. Uh, these young girls were um, both Muslim and Christian girls who were attending school and um, being taken out of that because of a belief system that feels that women uh, don't have a place in the educational system, which is just, uh, just unfathomable. Um, you know, particularly when you look around the world, um, you know, it's, women are being educated on some level, and I, I don't understand why, you know, but again, it's, this is a belief system that's foreign to me, that they would have this um, uh, thought that women should not be educated. Um, you know, my belief, of course, is that, you know, um, mothers are the first teachers. So quite naturally, you know, if these young women, you know, eventually uh, marry or whatever the case may be, they're going to be uh, responsible for uh, educating uh, their future generations. So it would be incumbent upon them to help them to become as educated as a, they possibly could. Because education uh, is, is, is a way out of poverty, is a way out of uh, conditions that are less than. So, um, 
you know, families, I think about the families of these young girls who, you know, are frantic, you know, I mean, I can't even think about having a, a child of mine just taken and, and not know their whereabouts or their conditions. Now, you know, reports have indicated that they do know their whereabouts to some degree, but then they're not doing anything. Um, so, you know, this is a political situation. We're not um, probably as knowledgeable about all of it as we should be, you know, so I, I can't really speak uh, um, more than what I'm saying right now about uh, the extent of what's happening here, but I just know that as a parent, a grandparent, I would be just out of my mind concerned about what is happening to that child. You know, uh, these are young girls, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, you know, each day that they're away, it's, it's you know, it just unfortunate for the families and for these young girls what is the condition are they being treated fairly how are they being treated you know um, just just so many questions so many questions more than any answers that I could uh, provide for you today and, you know and also what I don't understand is how the you know the Taliban and these Muslim extremists are right they're, you know they're, pr they're practicing you know the uh, the Quran and so forth I mean um, that's why I guess I have an issue with you know with you know with, with religion, but I'll leave religion out of this right now. But um, uh, to you know to abduct these young girls, all right, and all you know in all accounts in the news media that you know they've been threatened to sell them off and to sell these young ladies off and marry them, you know, and some of them are twelve and thirteen and fourteen years old. Uh, it's it's just uh, it's it's mind boggling and you know and very frustrating and. And, uh, Mr. Hatter, what is your thoughts? You know, <clears throat> Ron, this is a great subject. I thought it was going to be very boring at first, uh, but after I looked into it and thought about it, I think it's a great subject. Uh, the group that we're referring to, the incident that we're referring to, was when uh, I think a group called Bo... Bo, Bo Harum. Group, yeah, Harum. Mm -hmm. a, um, and a Muslim group, um... Abducted 276 girls, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> who, uh, as they were opposed to the westernization of these girls, and that seems like it's um, it's an isolated event in the world, uh, but it has nothing to do with sexual, uh, you know, um, a violation of girls' rights or anything like that. And <clears throat> and glad that you did point that out that this is a a completely different discussion than discussions of girls being abducted for sexual reasons. But see, we don't really know yeah. that uh, at this point. Okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of F's in here. Okay, if, uh, but if this group, but it this, does not speak to it. Well, but if this terrorist group, okay, abducted these these uh, these young ladies, okay, and from the news accounts, they're talking about selling them, and you know, and, and marrying them off. All right, uh, uh, um, you know, there's there's a there's a there's a mixed bag here, okay? Now, um, which which is still unfolding, and probably as we speak. And what I don't understand is is that we, I think that the, the shift is changing in a way. We we're talking about you know education on one on you know on on in, in, on, on on one side, and then they're talking about on the other side. All right, this terrorist group, Boko Haram, they've been fighting over Nigeria, all right, uh, uh, with the l legitimate government of President Goodluck Jonathan. And, and the accounts, the news accounts are saying that in order to get the girls back, then you release, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of our, our, of our, yeah, mem of our members, story. all right? Mm -hmm. So now, you know, they need to get, this, they need to get the shit straight. But, you know, and I'm glad that Denise uh, did surface this argument that we don't know a lot about this. We don't have enough substance to really make any good mm -hmm. judgments that could uh, result in some kind of an action strategy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But if we put boots on the ground, that could be dangerous. Yes. Because, yes. Uh, like you said, Ron, uh, there are terrorist groups like Jihad and like uh, Kurds and all of those that are involved. And then you got a legitimate government, but you can't tell which one has the most power. And uh, there are 50% of people on one side or the other. 
and the United States could go and say we put boots on the ground and choose the wrong side. And those could potentially be our allies. Right. So we have to be careful about that. I would, uh, we wouldn't know how to negotiate ourselves up with that kind of condition. So I, I would be um, inclined to make some philosophical judgments, but never an action judgment in this case. I think that the United Nations would be the best place. Yes, that, to, would be the best. that would be the best form to operate in this circumstance because uh, the United States is not uh, uh, the police of the planet. Okay, mm -hmm. we cannot go in and, and authorize and dictate to other, um, you know, um, countries how they're supposed to operate, okay, because we don't have all the information. And to go in to try to be helpful, as Henry has alluded to, we may go in and do more harm than good. So I think we really have to be very, very diplomatic on how we approach it, but my thinking is going through the United Nations and having other countries sound the alarm, you know, this can happen here, this can happen other places, and we need to have some type of uh, approach that's going to be comprehensive in terms of making sure that we can minimize this kind of thing. Because we, want, we don't know what the outcome we, is going to be. And we, we all, really don't. And we all also have to realize, and I'm sure we can all attest to this, is that, you know, the UN is so slow in, you know, in, in, you know, in what they do. All right? Um... It could be months, it could be years before, before, you know, before any of these girls are found, if they are found, period, okay? Uh, and also, too, this situation is just not in Nigeria. We have the same uh, uh, situations right here in the city that we, uh, uh, we do our show from, all right? Flint, and the, as well as many other uh, uh, areas of, of, of America, sex slave and sex slave and sex slave and... Uh, in, in, I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer. But, but yes, Please but don't Ron, that. Yeah, one. because you know, right now, yeah. this, this was a political move. This was about, again, from the accounts that we've gotten in terms of, you know, uh, stopping the westernization, if you will. And it, westernization is, uh, is symbolic in terms of being educated. Free speech. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of it. And then, Bring political prisoners or prisoners that are opposed to the the central government there. So that's another issue. So all of this stuff is like a quagmire. We don't really understand all of that of the dynamics. It's just as as citizens of this country, we are emotionally charged by it because we think of our own families, we think of our own children. You send your child off to school, you know, you think about Sandy Hook, you think about all these dif different situations where a person dresses their kid up, sends them off to school, and then they don't see them anymore. Mm -hmm. That is terrifying. Yeah. That is absolutely terrifying. We would not even imagine that unless you've actually gone through that whole episode. So, you know, we, we can have a, a discussion about this, but it's going to be securitous in terms of we will not have an answer here. We won't have an answer because there's too many dynamics that go into play in this, this but situation. But we, we've had a discussion close to this in the past mm -hmm. in which we were, particularly when the Republicans were in the White House, we just couldn't understand why we became in, engaged in Iraq. And uh, we should have learned some lessons from that, mm -hmm. uh, from Korea, um, Vietnam, because mm -hmm. all of those were controversial. Mm -hmm. If we've learned anything, then we should be cautious about how we proceed. We don't have the resources anymore. We have the people, uh, but we don't have the resources to engage in a worldwide uh, uh, action plan to liberate a few people. Absolutely. <coughs> and Absolutely. I would be cautious about that. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I wanted to mention too, Ron, because you mentioned about what was going on here in Flint, so we don't want to mix apples and oranges here, because here in Flint we were dealing strictly with sex trafficking. That's, that was what that was about, okay? It didn't have any political connotations to it or anything like that. <laughs> it, was, it was human trafficking. Okay, and so in this regard, we're not sure if that's going to, over there, 
is Nigerian. It, we don't know if it's going to lead to that or not. It's assumed because they're females. But I mean, you know, a bunch of boys could be picked up and the same thing could happen. So we don't know. We just, there's just too many variables that we just don't have enough information on. But the thing is, is you, you got to set this stuff out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. to, uh, Absolutely. To uh, get a, 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 there is a connection. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, whether it's Flint, uh, Nigeria, uh, or China, or anywhere else in the world, okay. Because uh, what affects, what affects, what impacts our city impacts probably most every other city. Mm -hmm. But to add this, to add to this article, um, for a great many young girls, their education is curtailed by for what Americans would find an unlikely source. Their parents, in many developing countries, young girls are removed from, from school not only because their parents perceive that they cannot afford even public schools comes with a modest fee, but also to put them to work either around the house or for modest wages. Just as common, fathers literally sell their young daughters in marriage, often to men many times their age. UNICEF estimates, estimates that some 400 million women between the ages of 20 and 49 were married before their 18th birthday. An estimated one in three girls in developing countries is married before adulthood, and one in nine before they are 15. In some countries, Niger, Chad, and Bangladesh, for example, the percentage of adolescent brides is upwards of 75%. Many of these marriages are forced or arranged with some, bride, some, some brides marrying even before their teens. Now, that's ridiculous. It's a cultural thing. Yes. You know? It's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. It's foreign to us mm -hmm. because we know how we do things here in these United States. Mm -hmm. And we have our own set of morals and values and codes, okay? Mm -hmm. But worldwide, they do not see from our perspective, okay? We may not like what they do, but you have to understand there are differences, okay? And yes, uh, you know, we wouldn't want to see... A, a child bride. We, we don't want to see arranged marriages and we don't allow those things, at least in our system, we have it in place where those things are protected. Kids are protected. Okay, but in other countries, they don't have those same types of protection. And in fact, they support it. As you said, they are, their parents, because of economics, mm -hmm. they cannot, cannot maybe afford to feed their family. So they have to farm their children off so that it becomes less of a burden to the family. You know, it's un, you know, like I said, these are things that that hurt you because you're saying, how could this be? You know, but in other cultures, this is a norm. Okay, our norm is not their norm. You know, so even though we don't like it, we have to understand that you know it's just different. You know, and um, unless we have a universal set of codes and morals and things like that that goes around the world, it's going to be that way. It's just going to be that way. And so, you know, what do you do with that? You know, you can, you know, have these organizations that maybe can fight for change in those countries and see if their governments will support those kind of changes. But what can we do here? We have to maintain our own structure here and make sure that that's solid. Because, you know, we have, as you say, we got trafficking going on here. We have, as a matter of fact, we have people who leave this country to go to other countries because they can get younger girls mm -hmm. and boys um, for those kind of activities. Wrong. We know it's wrong. Our laws protect the kids here, so they go where the kids aren't protected. Oh, well, this is a whole nother can of worms you've done open up here now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I don't understand is, is uh, where this cultural stuff came from. I mean, you know, uh, I know it exists, but how in the world could a parent sell their, their daughter, since we're talking about girls, you know, at eight and nine years old to, you know, to an old man. That's, that's beyond, you know, and I agree with you, you know, cultural differences and so forth, but, but who in the hell th brought up this cultural stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, in terms of selling your, your you know, your, your children. But Ron, it's not so, it's not so difficult to understand. Uh, poverty has existed in the world for, for hundreds of thousands, for, for Thousands of years, yeah, okay. Since the beginning. And so when people are depressed, what do they do? They look around for a commodity that has value to them and that will bring money into the household. And uh, you can read a lot about cultures that do that and have done it. 
And maybe in this country we've done it too early in the American West. Uh, when they were opening up the West, there were few white women that were available to the trappers and explorers and people who pushed the boundaries of West uh, mm -hmm. further and further. They were only exposed to uh, uh, Buffalo soldiers, women, mm -hmm. and to American Indians. So, but they wanted people that looked like them, that act like they had the same kind of culture. So they, when these young girls uh, tra travel across the Mississippi, uh, those kind of things, it was likely to be those kind of things that would occur. As a matter of fact, I read something that uh, just last week that we had episodes of that kind of behavior in this country. Mm -hmm. But it was what was necessary. Mm -hmm. it, it was a necessity to uh, maintaining the culture, mm -hmm. maintaining the numbers, and what people wanted and needed. They do, the Greeks and Romans did the same thing. So it's not so, and a lot of this was uh, legitimized by religion. Uh, they wrote that into religious script, and it became the law of the land and the practice of the, the order. Mm -hmm. And so much for religion. So much for religion, I guess, again. To me, these people are nothing more than pedophiles. That's my opinion, all right? Okay. okay. <laughs> are pedophiles. <laughs> right. That word wasn't invented in those days. Well, mm -hmm. we're in the 21st century, so, you know, but... And you know, and you see it, see this just the other day, you know, uh, I'm going to get back on topic, but just the other day I was reading in the paper, all right, where here we go again, you know, chief, uh, chief of police, all right, uh, the feds did a, did a, a roundup, uh, 70, 100 people around the country, all right, police chief gets knocked off, a uh, priest gets knocked off, a rabbi gets knocked off, all right, I mean, this has got to stop. Explain knocked off. I'm not sure I'm following. Yeah. Caught. Okay. Oh, caught. they get caught okay. in illicit behavior. Yes. Okay. 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 And was, was this illicit behavior with minors? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So you have to be well, real clear. And every time you turn, and every time you turn around, okay, uh, somebody is getting. Uh, uh, but we got arrested. a justice system that that provides for that. Mm -hmm. Anybody caught doing it, they are brought under the long arm of the law. And treat it right. Well, let's hope so. But a lot well, no, of them, no, no. All you have to do is go on your computer, all right. And I guarantee you, in your neighborhood out there, you're going to see a bunch of little red dots. All right. I don't care where you live in the, in, in the United States. Sex offender. Type that in. That's all you have to. That's all you have to type in. Sex offender, and you'll be amazed. All right. Probably in a lot of cases, it's going to be your next door neighbor. So you, you folks out there listening, just type in sex offender and see what comes up. But, but Ron, uh, my last comment here is that we live among human beings. Human beings have flaws. The character of Henry, these you are can animals. Educate, you can educate them. You can train them. You can uh, uh, accept them into a religion. And they will still violate expectations by society. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn to live with that. The only thing that we're here now is to minimize the impact on how they affect society. We can't stop it. Exactly. But we've got to educate the people out there, all right? That's how you hopefully minimize, you know, this, the, these situations. Mm -hmm. You've got to educate the people. Well, and, and I think that that's what, you know, this show is doing and other um, vehicles are um, making it available, the information about how to protect um, young uh, persons from, you know, being snatched and, and that kind of thing. You do what you can, but a person who has a mindset to try to do some harm to a child, they'll, they'll figure out a way if that's their intent. They'll figure it out. So it's up to parents and uh, the community to do what they can because again going back to this article and about the stories that I've heard so far the government from what I understood had some information some inkling that this was going to occur now if that be true then it would have been incumbent upon them to have the forces that they needed to help protect those girls as they were going to and from school. Mm -hmm. You understand? So 
their due diligence was lacking. Exactly. And so therefore, this situation appears to have occurred based on in the information that I have. So there's too much, like I said, there's too much mm -hmm. uh, uh, of uh, responsibility that needs to be, you know, laid out here. In the United States, we have our own issues. We have mm -hmm. our own problems. And we need to address our problems before we start reaching out to other lands trying to help them solve theirs. But we've already reached out. Even the president's wife have, has, has raised concern about, you know, these, uh, these ladies over in Nigeria. You know, and hopefully uh, they'll send one of them uh, uh, things over there. And, you know, uh, what do you call them? Envoy. Uh, <laughs> droids? Um, no, what are the, uh, those things? I know what you're talking about, those little floating... Oh, yeah, yeah. Drones. 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 Yeah, yeah. that's a huge yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take out, take out, take out these people. Uh, uh, some reports said that, you know, the, the Nigerian army had had uh, four hours uh, heads up, and some say, uh, some say they had uh, uh, four days heads up, some say they had four hours heads up, all right? And uh, some general gets on there and saying, says that uh, we know where they're at. Well, doggone it, if you know where they're at, all right, uh, 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 <clears throat> you got you got the services of, 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 of the mighty United States over there in terms of intelligence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what's the problem? You know, I don't, what's the problem? Go in there and get these girls, okay? Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're not sold off as, as, as promised by uh, the leader of this uh, Boko Haram uh, such outfit, all right? To me, he's a hoodlum. But okay? right. anybody like him, anybody like him is a hoodlum, all right? Anybody like him is a pedophile, in my opinion. Right. Okay? But we have to be careful. When, when people are under scrutiny like that, we have to make sure that someone c commits the overact before you go in and blast away and kill people without evidence that uh, this is certain, certain things are going to happen and people are going to be killed. We don't want to kill people needlessly and based upon just BS. Well, I understand that. I understand that. I'm not suggesting, you know, that any, any American uh, 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 troops, you know, go over there. But with the intelligence that's being sent over there, you know, and the help that's being, uh, you know, uh, given to to assist the Nigerian government, you know what I mean? We should be able to uh, come to some kind of uh, understanding. This has been a great conversation. Again, uh, our time has ran out, but I want to thank our millions of viewers worldwide and my uh, very uh, informed uh, co-host, Mr. Henry Hatter, Mrs. Uh, Denise Smith-Allen, and you, uh, the public. Until next time, this is Ronald Bay Robinson and friends saying, stay focused.